arrived, May 2012, my great friend Ethan and I decided we're going to Aramaic Academy. By the way, Ethan is sitting down back there with his, with his uh, fiance. <laughs> uh, anyway, we decided we're going to this amazing place, Aramaic Academy. So early in the morning, we get our packs. I drive to Ethan's place, and we start heading up north on Highway 77 or Oracle Road. We pass the town of Oracle, and by the time we get to Mammoth, a little after that, on the right hand side, you see our life road. And we take that dirt road, we get to the parking lot, get our bikes together and start heading down. We get to the bottom of the canyon where Arabaipa Creek has been running for hundreds, maybe thousands of years. And we're in this beautiful place. And we start walking and we decide, well, we have two options. We can stay in the water or we can go on this narrow trail. And we think, well, we have neoprene socks, start of the summer, probably by the time we're walking for a long time, it's going to be kind of cold. So we say, let's go on the, on, the, on the trail for the most part, if we can. So we go on this narrow trail, and as we're getting into the depth of the canyon, we're heading northeast, and this trail starts getting narrower, and this tall grass starts surrounding us. And it's pretty narrow, Ethan is in front of me, I am behind, and I'm thinking, you know what they say, when you're hiking out in the woods, the first person wakes up to the rattlesnake, the second person gets beaten, and I'm thinking, oh. <laughs> so Ethan's there, I'm trying to keep my distance, and you know, he's looking at it with his binoculars on these beautiful edges of the canyon, you know, you start to relax, you say, oh, it's all good, you're hiking there, very nice, and then, bam, I get his backpack in front of my face, he's pushing me, and I'm like, what the heck is going on? You know, 50 pounds of back are in front of me, my abs are starting to like, you know, feel tense, my lower back as well, I have 40 pounds on here, I'm trying to back up, and what's going on, what's going on? And, and you know, he's super tall, and I have his back here, and I'm trying to like, just maybe look a little bit on the side, he has his arms are stretched out, I look out and I see this huge rattlesnake, two feet from us, heading towards us. I just turn around and I'm trying to see, oh my god, oh my god, I hope there's not another one or we are ambushed here. And we can barely see it, right? And any of these, like, yes, grass, and I think, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I don't want to die here. Out of the corner of my eye, I see the back of the thing just going in, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> this is dangerous, we can die here. So, you know, we, we keep going down and as soon as we, as soon as we see a clearance, we go on to the left, we go into the water. And you know, we're hiking there, and if you haven't had the experience of hiking with neoprene socks, you have got to try it. Because after <laughs> half a mile, you know, if, if it's shallow water, you'll be fine. But if it's deep water, you know, when it just starts getting into there, and you have this feeling that you're walking with your feet inside these water balloons, and you're going, like, <laughs> and it's just the most strange feeling I've never had felt. And it's just, you know, it's just, just this washiness there, and your toes kind of feel, but we keep going, you know, way to these beautiful pools. We're just having a great time. We forget about the whole rattlesnake incident. We keep going and on our right hand side we see a place uh, with a nice sandy beach, a nice rice elevated area, and we decide let's camp here. We drop our bags, put up the tent, and we decide we're going to explore this place. We were familiar with our Baipa Canyon, and we had seen it on the map, and we had talked with our friend who had been there in November of the year before. And we had counted how many side canyons were on our right, how many on our left, and as we were up, we said we are close to it. We're close to the special place. So let's go explore. We're gonna try to find Booger Canyon. So we're exploring around in Shrinov. Once you see it, you cannot miss it. Because if Mother Nature had sneezed and she hadn't cleaned her nostrils, this huge three-story tall, like three-story wide boulder as big as heck would be right there in front of the canyon, next to some smaller ones. And sure enough, we said, well, you know, let's explore a little bit there. We start trying to you know, scramble up, and then the train is just way too hard. We decide, you know, we're not going to get very far. We start coming down, and there is this nice covered area with the wire on the, on the back, 
there in some really big, what would like like maybe cottonwood trees, I don't know, some really big trees. We're hiking there, kind of push walking on our way, and then I see down underneath what is this amorphous thing there, and I'm like, that's pretty funny. And I don't pay much attention to it. And then on the other side, there is this print, this pop print. And I, you know, it's not too big, it's like, you know, JB. And I'm thinking, well, that's funny. I mean, that's not a big pop print, really. But then, you know, it dawns on me, well, if you look at a big, say, German Shepherd, you know, the pop prints are like JB. They're like So these things may be four times bigger. So we're talking about a 400 pound animal. And next to it, what it looked like a metamorphous thing turns out to be scat, you know, which in other words is poo. And it has all these berries and you know half chewed things and something like that. You know, drop that little thing there. And you know, it, it's very unlikely that it's a wild cat or you know some kind of feline thing. And it's certainly not a not a deer. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and unless raccoons have really gotten really big in this area of the country, this is a this is a big animal. So we say, well, you know, maybe we ought to be careful when we have dinner. We maybe don't want to have dinner too close to that. But we keep walking. We go on one sandy and rocky beach there, and uh, you know, we see another rattlesnake there. But it's far enough that we you know, we are careful. We back off, uh, go back to camp start having our dinner or start preparing for our dinner and we think, well, we don't want to eat here, we want to go far away. So we go, I don't know, maybe a hundred feet towards the creek and we have our dinner there, come back to camp, you know, put all of that trash really nicely into a ziplock bag so that there is no smell, no scent that the animals would like to pursue. And we proceed to just you know, retire to bed. But then we think, well, our packs are just out there. We need to, we need to do something. Let's, let's try to put them on a branch. No, it's, it's not, it's not you know, high enough. Then we have enough rope that we can go ahead and toss a rope over a, over a tree branch so it's kind of high. And you know, Ethan starts like pulling on the rope, and I don't know why he did decide on that. I mean, he's way taller than I am, but I'm like, you know, trying to push the thing. And it doesn't go very far. And I'm just like, Ethan, you know, it's too, it's too low. So he's like, well, you know, find something to push it up. And, and you know, he's like you know, pulling the rope. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, there's a stick there. So I grab the stick and I start. <laughs> and sure enough, that thing actually works. I mean, there is a lot of friction on the rope. But the thing is, like, really hoisting that thing pretty nice. And we think, shit, it's a pretty nice hoisting element. And from that time on, every time we go camping, hey, bring the hoisting element, and sure enough, you start going with a stick there. It works beautifully. Then we realize, shoot, we didn't pull our toothpaste out. Okay, pull it down again. <laughs> it's like, I want to mess around. You know, and go back again. Fair enough. Go to bed. And next morning, I just feel something, you know, pushing me, and I'm like, no, it's like too early. And then I'm like, I'm just starting to sleep, and I just feel, and then I'm like, no. It's like, if I pretend that I'm asleep, he's going to leave me alone. And then he's just gone, and I'm like, shit. Okay, for you know, there is a rattlesnake outside the tent. But rattlesnakes are small. Their brains are pretty tiny. They are not smart. They don't have hands. They cannot open the zipper. Rattlesnake outside the tent, we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end, I'm like, but I, I'm like, okay. So I you know, start waking up, I try to open my eyes. You know, after a tired day of, of hiking, you know, it's hard to open your eyes. I see that. I look next to me, there is Ethan. And he said, Jose. Jose. And I look, and out of the tent, you know, maybe to the distance to the door, there is this huge bear. Just sniffing right by right underneath our pack, you know, maybe what we were like spinning over to the face. And I'm like, oh. There's something wrong with it. And then the bear looks at us. And what do we do? And the bear looks at us. And I'm like, and so 
we can start to just wait. Hey! Just start slapping us hard and yelling us hard in the very quick. <laughs> Go somewhere. Sure enough, we couldn't sleep after that. So, you know, wake like, up, uh, do some oatmeal, have breakfast, get out of there. I start walking out. And you know, it's interesting how when you're hiking in these places, you think it's really green, and it is really green. But then once in a while, out there in the, in the, in the distance, you see there's something there that doesn't, looks kind of out of place. And there is this big mound, and at some point, we see, oh, shoot, there is a bear right there. Probably the same one we already saw. And it's far down, down from where we are. And so if you picture the canyon, you come one way up, and you have only one way down unless you want to go farther into the canyon. So we're like, oh my god, we're right here, car is there, bear is here. <laughs> oh. So we're starting to make it out. And we, we don't want to start with the bear. So we start singing and clapping. Hey, and the only thing that sounds to me is like we are living in a jealousy. We are living in a jealous summary. <laughs> we're hiking out and we're trying to start with the bear. Ethan thinks, oh, if that bear comes, I'm gonna like. I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna go at its nose and it's like this tiny knife. And it's huge there. I'm gonna eat that I know that's gonna work. No, it's gonna be fine. So we start making it out. Finally, on the distance we see the bear kind of taking off on one side canyon where we decide we're out of it. So we, we book it to the end of the canyon and so far we were fine. Thank you so much.